No to war! No to war! Canada out of NATO now! Canada out of NATO now! You know, the people say, well, if, if there's not going to be a Russian invasion, and there's nothing to this, then why should we worry? Well, here's why we should worry, folks. Here's why we should worry. Because when you have a circumstance like this, with more arms being shipped to Ukraine, uh, to Latvia, to Poland, and to other uh, frontline states of NATO's expansion into Eastern Europe, and you have nuclear weapons there, any miscalculation, any provocation could lead to a war. It could even be a mistake but it could lead to a war. Millions of people have died and even more have been displaced by NATO bombs in Yugoslavia, Syria, Iraq, and Libya. These wars are decided on by the rich and fought by the working class. As I'm speaking, Canada, along with other NATO forces, are conducting war games in Ukraine under the guise of defense against Russia. Since the fall of the Soviet Union, NATO has expanded eastward to the border with Russia. It's not too hard to figure out how the U.S. would react if Russia entered a military alliance with Mexico and stationed troops at its border. Right. <laughs> we know that NATO is not a defensive alliance, but an offensive alliance serving the interests of Western imperialism. We know that the military-industrial complex is the world's largest polluter. We know that NATO member countries do not hesitate to use racism, xenophobia, and Islamophobia to justify their wars. We know that NATO member countries prioritize military spending over social services. They alone account for 56% of military spending worldwide. Shame! Shame! That we don't have a foreign policy of our own anymore. Mm -hmm. Our, we have a North American foreign policy, and it's determined in Virginia and in Washington. And that's the problem. Shame! Shame. Well, I've been around for a while, and some of you have too, I can see. And you may remember that when Canadian parliaments were talking about things like the war in Vietnam, or the war in Korea even, there were other voices that could be heard in parliament. But today, there are no other voices. There yeah. could be. The NDP is still there. The Green Party is there. They say they're for peace. The Bloc is there. Well, we know about the Conservatives, so we don't worry about them. They're the biggest talks <laughs> of all. But where are the other voices? These people are not uh, victims of disinformation. They have access to the information. They can get it if they want to. This is a really dangerous situation where Parliament is so quiet. And it fits with what they did with respect to the Uyghur people on the motion on China. You know, like declaring that there was a, a genocide in China. Well, if you look into it, you'll find out that's not the truth either. But there was a genocide in Canada. So where's all the big noise about that? And in Palestine. And in Palestine and in other places. And that our country is yeah. involved in. Yeah. Right? And in terms of indigenous people responsible for. So what's the message here? Well, we need to build up the peace movement in this country. And I can remember, and some of you will remember, 20 years ago, we had a huge peace movement in this country. Hundreds of thousands of people would come out to protest Canadian foreign policy and U.S. foreign policy and push that Canada should not adopt U.S. foreign policy on various questions. But it's this disinformation campaign which has confused people, made it difficult for them to know what is the truth. So dem demonstrations like today are very important because this, we can give people the accurate information. But it can't just stop today. We have to push the government. We have to do more protests. Go to Jolly's office. And I understand in, in Montreal, that's one of the things that they're planning to do today. And other cabinet ministers. We have to push back. And we have to find the ways to let people know what is the real situation there. And what should, what's a reasonable position in terms of finding a peaceful solution 
for us to adopt, for Canada to, to press. We have a minority government, and this is a good thing today, because it means they're subject to pressure. And we need to press Canada, the Canadian government, and the NDP and the Greens and the Bloc to say, we don't want to be involved in this dirty war. We want Can Canadian troops to be returned to Canada. Yes. We don't want those sanctions cancelled. Right. And we want Canada to get out of NATO. Oh, and we oh, want oh. an independent Canadian foreign policy of peace and disarmament. Right. And by God, folks, we're going to have to organize and work. Because it isn't going to happen without the mass pressure of the Canadian people, of working people, on this government and on this military. Right. And don't forget, the, down, the, the other upside is if we free all those funds up for what Andrew was talking about, free tuition and a national child care program that's public and, uh, oh, and, uh, and affordable social housing and job creation, all those things we could be doing with that money instead of killing people and endangering the world. Thank you. No more NATO! No more NATO! No to war! No to war! Canada out of NATO now! Yeah. Yeah.